Did you grow up with this, this gift as a psychic? I Does did. it run in your family? How did this all come about? So it's actually crazy. My grandmother had this ability who passed it on to my mom and then in turn passed it on to me. And I remember going you know, to bed at night and I felt like I was living that movie, The Sixth Sense, because every time I tried to go to sleep, every time I was alone, there were souls that would come in that would try to talk to me. And growing up, I felt like I was channeling every cemetery in the nearby area because <laughs> all of these souls knew that they could speak to me and reach and, me, and they tried. And I yeah. understand, as a child, I mean, that freaked you out a little bit, didn't it? Oh, it did. I, I was petrified. You can remember that growing up, just being three, four, five years old and having this gift, I never realized that I was psychic. I literally just thought that the house was haunted or where I was going was oh haunted. Oh my gosh, can I would you, be terrified. What do the souls look like? Like, do you see, do they look like they look right before they passed away? Are they just like shadows? What, are, is somebody standing behind me? Like, what, what's going on? Well, it's funny, because when I look out onto the audience, it's almost like, you know, the souls, it's almost like the souls line up behind them. So when I look onto the audience, it's like the audience disappears, and all I see is dead people. Like, your dad departed, because he's right there behind you when I'm connecting. So, no, and I also have, like, a young male that passed in tragedy right here. That's how I see them. But the funny part is, is that growing up with this, all I tried to do was push this away. I didn't want to go and do this. I didn't want to be a psychic or a medium or connect with the dead or speak to the other side. And it's funny because, because of the fact that I was so afraid, I really missed my calling a little bit. I always knew that I wanted to do something with helping others, but I wasn't sure what that actually was. Matt, how old are you? I'm 28. You don't miss your calling when you're 28. <laughs> well, wait a minute. I didn't even go to medical school until I was 27. He's ambitious. So, He's ambitious. Let me finish. You didn't let me finish. <laughs> I actually started my career as an EMT working for the World Trade Center in Boston. That's awesome. So, awesome. That is awesome. Right. I, so my dream was to go and to be a paramedic and then maybe even physician's assistant. And it was around that time that I worked up the courage to go and see a medium for the first time myself. I wanted to see somebody who was doing this professionally and I wanted to come face to face with what I had been running from and my whole life changed because I realized this was actually a gift and that, you know, I had to run with it and that, you know, if I felt something, I could say something that could help, you know, relieve people's guilt or, you know, the burdens of losing somebody. Talk to me about, um, really quickly, the fun stuff, the filming with your family, the new show, because it looks like there's a hell of a dynamic going on there. Oh, yes. So the funny part is, is that my mom has this gift. You know, it was passed down to me, but my sister was the forgotten child for some reason. My sister has no ability whatsoever. I mean, she's barely able to talk to the living, never mind the dead. <laughs> so, you know, I think she's a little bit salty because of that. So, you know, she tries to say that she's, you know, skeptical of, of what I do. But, you know, I think it's just because I was growing up and I was having these experiences and my sister wasn't. And my dad was absent from my life because he was in the military for most of my life. So he was 21 years, you know, retired Navy captain. So, you know, when he came home, it was like he found out, oh, my God, you know, my son's a medium. And then, you know, there's my sister who's like, I had to live with these people this whole time. Well, your dad and sister, that's, a, that's an amazing dynamic. They work with me. They work with me every day, and we're family, but we do get on each other's nerves, which you'll see in the show. Do you um, care to do a reading or two Absolutely. here today? Absolutely. Do you mind if I get up? You, you take it away. You, you take it away. You do what you have to Thank do. You. We don't know how this works. And just for everybody at home, these, no one was pre-selected. He is literally just walking out into the audience. I actually want to start right with you, because when I was over there, your dad was sitting right behind you, letting you oh know that gosh. he's here. Can you take this? Sure. So know that this is just his way of acknowledging that he's here. And by the way, he's so excited. And this is how I see them. When I connect with them, though, I'll see them sitting behind the person. But then I'll start to feel and sense things of what they went through. And when I'm connecting with your dad, this man had many issues here in the physical world within his body when I'm connecting with him. And more importantly, when I'm speaking to him, I keep feeling like I can't breathe when I'm connecting with him. Because he shows me there was lung issues. Do you understand that? Yes. And he said to me, I never wanted to admit that I was sick. I didn't want to admit that things were wrong with me. He says, and I kept so much hidden on the inside. Do you yes. understand that? Yes, I do. But know that one of the things that he's acknowledging is he wants to thank you for the way that you went to see him before his departure. I remember the day. Because your dad says to me, he goes, you know, he talks about not being able to speak before he passed. Uh -huh. But he talks about you holding his hands and he remembers how to, feeling your touch. He says, and he wants you to know that on the other side, that he knows everything that you did for him. So even though he couldn't hear or he couldn't communicate, know it's his way of acknowledging that he knew that you were there. And I gotta tell you, your dad's funny on the other side when I'm oh connecting gosh, with him. Oh my gosh, yes. Because he had such a human, such a good sense of humor. He says, let her know that I'm back to looking good, he's saying to me. <laughs> 
he and was a good looking man. <laughs> He actually just leaned over and kissed you and I'm connecting with him. Oh. He says, I want you to know that you lived up to every expectation that I had, of, I had of you as a daughter. And he's acknowledging that. Thank you. Did your mom also depart? Yes. Because your mother's stepping forward now. This is what I mean. They all try to talk all at once. And she's like, what about me? I'm the mother. Aren't you going to talk to me? <laughs> but know that her and your dad are together on the other side and that they are OK. And there's one other thing. I'm also connecting with the child that had passed as well. OK. Where was the child that departed? I had a sister that died just after birth. She's with your mom? Yes. And that's why your mom was so protective of you here in this world. Oh, and she was. Your mom just asked me to hold your hands. Can I come over here? Gosh, yes. Because I know that she was your best friend. Can I give you a hug? Of course. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're very welcome. I also want to talk about life support. Who passed on life support? Was that your dad? Life support? It was my dad, yeah. Hello, pay attention. <laughs> can you all, uh, sorry, can I, can I have this whole row stand up? Is that okay? Can I have this whole row stand up? It's, can you pass this down here? This is what happens to me, is that they call me over when I'm connecting. I see them sitting behind you. And he kept saying, I'm the father, I'm the father. And he talked about life support. You understand that? Uh -huh. So you had to take him off of life support here in the physical world. Yes. Know that your dad say, is saying that I'm sorry for what you had to go through and the choices that you had to make on my behalf. Oh, okay. You know, your dad is acknowledging when I'm connecting that the first thing that he wants you to know is that he is okay, but also letting you know that even if he were to survive this, he says, I would have never been the same person. He says, so can you please let my daughter know that even though it was so hard to say goodbye and to make that choice, he says, I want you to know that I would have never been the same person that you knew and loved. Thank you. There's also something else that I have to talk about. And I know that you don't want to bring it up, but you don't want to talk about it. But your dad tells me that before he had died, that there were issues that the two of you had here in the physical world. Because mm -hmm. he talks about some emotional separations and some emotional issues that had gone on. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. He says to me, and I want you to know that I never got to be the father that I should have been and the father that I could have been. Do you understand that? Uh -huh. He says, and if I would have known that this was going to happen and if I would have known that I was going to die, he said, I would have spent more time with you. Because you feel like you grew up not getting to know your dad or be there with your dad. He says, I want to apologize for that. Because he talks about other family members having to take care of you or having to be a part of your care. And your dad knows how much you struggled with that. He says, but you are such a beautiful person because of that. He says, and you care so deeply because you had to go through so many things yourself and by yourself. So your dad says, I wouldn't change a thing. He says, by the way, how the way that you were raised and for the woman that you are today, because he's acknowledging that. Thank you. Can I come give you a hug? Exactly. Can you come over this way? Exactly. I really hope this helped you today. Thank you so much for coming and being here. And wow. you're bringing out so many emotions that people probably have been buried or have buried. And um, so much that you do, we don't understand. Um, but I just, you can, the two of you can nod. Was that experience cathartic in any way? And Matt, you also have a new book out, not just a new show. I do. Can I come take my seat? You can. Yes. <laughs> Here's the deal. You, you kept asking permission, but, but when, when you're doing that, the stage is yours. So tell us about the book. So I have a book that's out that's actually coming out. It's called When Heaven Calls, Life Lessons from America's Top Psychic Medium. And it talks about me growing up, how I understood my gift, how I understood that I was a psychic medium. And what I love about this book is that it's so different from any other medium book, is that I understand that some people don't understand what I do, and they don't understand you know, about speaking to the dead or connecting with the other side. So at the end of each chapter, what I did was I put tools for life. And tools for life is what, what you read in the chapter, you can actually apply to your own life, whether it be how to manifest, how to receive signs from your loved ones, you know, to different challenges that I had gone through in my life, like, like overcoming bullying in high school. Any fashion tips? Because you've got that fashion. That I left out. That I left out. And hey, Matt doesn't have time to do a reading for everyone here, but you do have a surprise for the audience. OK, so here's a surprise. Just for all of you, I got you the manuscript of my book. And you're going to be. The best part is, is that you're going to be the only one who has this copy, because there were only 90 printed, so nobody else will have a copy but you. There you go. I suggest you check out Matt on Meet the Frasers. It's Mondays at 10 p.m. on E. Thanks again. Thank you.